I'm Lynn Danino and I'm a working artist. I've supported myself for almost 40 years and mostly I make sculpture and it's in the category of humorous or witty and I just love making things so I've got to be busy all the time. We arrived in the airport in Russia, in Moscow, and it was uh, uh, so dimly lit that you couldn't even read uh, posters. Uh, it was so dark in there. And uh, it was my understanding that Valerian would pick us up at the airport, and we probably waited six hours in that dark, mysterious place with no one showing up. It was terrifying. Jack and I uh, took, I believe, three suitcases each, and I generally travel very light, so one of those suitcases had my clothes in it, and probably the same for Jack, and then the other two suitcases were each packed with certain types of meals we wanted to prepare for the Russian hosts who would be putting us up. So I had a Mexican meal for 10 in my suitcase, and I had an Italian meal, and I forget what Jack's meals were, but we collaborated at the beginning so that we would have uh, things to turn the Russians on to because everybody knew they were starving over there. And we thought they probably had no interface with other cultures, which turns out to be correct. And uh, Jack also brought jars of peanut butter, which they don't have in Russia, at least they didn't have at the time. We brought a Jiffy Pop to pop on the tops of their stoves. We brought marshmallows, just kooky American things that the Russians very politely ate and did not care one bit about ever having again. <laughs> We were in many people's uh, apartments for dinners and lunches, and uh, we did not see raw fish, or fish for that matter, I don't remember seeing any. Uh, occasionally we would get beef, mostly it was vegetables, and from the door of the apartment we could see the dining room table, which looked like it had a lot of food on it. And when you got close up, one bowl would be cabbage and potatoes, and the next one would be carrots and beets, and the next one would be beets and cabbage. And every day as you went to a lunch or a dinner, you would see those three or four vegetables in endless combinations. And that'd be about it. We did have a chance to go on Aeroflot from uh, Moscow to uh, Akadem Gorduk, and uh, Aeroflot, of course, has the reputation as the uh, most dangerous airplane in the world, and it did feel that way. Uh, it had metal seats, and they weren't bolted to the floor, or at least many of them weren't, so you could hear them moving around. And uh, there was a carpet uh, going down the middle that wasn't attached to the floor at all, so it's like one of those runners that it's really too thin, so it kind of balls up all along the way. And the stewards or stewardesses, I can't remember which they had, were running back and forth. I don't know exactly what they were doing because there was very little in the way of service. Uh, you could hear them rattling the big heavy real silverware in trays at the back. And each person got a little brown bag with a peeled boiled egg in the bottom of it and a little piece of leather that was probably actually meat. And it wasn't wrapped up. It didn't look like anything familiar. So it was pretty scary, but that was all you got. Jack and I had a pretty hard time on the trip. And it wasn't completely Jack's fault. Uh, we were under an enormous amount of stress. Of course, we were there to try to get the paintings back, his show that had been there by that time for many years. And then there was the pressure of having such a hard time finding something to eat. And we were both pretty willing to eat just about anything, but at that time in Russia, uh, the shelves were very bare. It's possible that the people were so generous and so nice because they'd all had so much vodka to drink from breakfast until 
2 in the morning. So, of course, you can't talk about Russia without talking about the vodka. And at every uh, lunch or dinner we went to, and maybe breakfast also, they had uh, pretty much uh, jelly glasses, those little glasses that are about that tall at each person's place, and they would pour it to the very top with vodka. And I like to drink, but I cannot drink a lot. I just would, it would be too painful. So I had to get really good at um, pretending to take a sip because the minute they saw that there was some uh, extra space in your glass, they would pour more vodka in it. So I would just pretend to take a sip and then put it back down. Jack, on the other hand, usually sitting right next to me, appeared to be just wolfing the vodka down because he's a much better guest than I am. So the Russians uh, put us up in this apartment that looked like it had been used by officials for uh, sexual entertainment. And the reason we thought that was because of all the empty liquor bottles and uh, tons of ashtrays with cigarette butts in them. And no evidence of anybody actually living there. In other words, there weren't sheets or blankets or towels or anything like that. And we were supposed to stay in this place for about a week. So uh, by this time, Jack and I pretty much weren't talking to each other at all. It was a really hard place to be, and even though they told us they would uh, come and get us, we would wait for a phone call, we would wait for them to show up. The two of us could never leave at the same time. Uh, if one person left, they felt like they couldn't go away far. It was really pretty scary. So uh, who is this Jack character? At that time, I was like, I could kill him. Look what he got me into. This is not fun. So it, it was challenging, and I'm uh, thrilled to have those memories, even though they were challenging. I think uh, they make great stories. And if somebody wants to hear what Russia was like, I can certainly tell them. So uh, we, we came back. I think we probably didn't talk to each other for a few years. We were both worn out from that trip. But I always admired that Jack uh, was so uh, diligently going after his work, after all. It's his damn work. 